What up, everybody? It's your boy, Young Fizz, a.k.a. Mr. Dope Status, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be explaining the Orion Studio Control Panel. Um, before you leave this video, this video is also for people using Orion products, period. So this also could be useful for the Zentor and Goliath, um, this discrete, um, because all the control panels work very similarly. The only difference is, obviously, the inputs and outputs. You may not have as many as I do here. Let me show you guys a little bit why it's a great choice and kind of walk you guys through some of the routing, um, the preamps and how all this stuff kind of works together. So the first thing that you notice here, you have your um, on and off switch here. So this is going to cut the uh, interface on or off. You have your monitor A and B. So, for example, you can have your your Rocket 8s, you know, or your NS10s for mix A, then, you know, monitor mix B. Um, then you have like your control volume here um, and that controls it for both of them there. Right now, you're not going to hear anything because I have it pretty much turned off. But if you want it turned on, you want to make sure this green switch is engaged. The next thing you have here is your clock source, which you can select. Um, I don't use anything except um, bes uh, besides the oven and then the word clock, WC's word clock. It also has like the ADAT, ADAT2, 4X, SPDIF, USB. Um, it doesn't really apply to me. So if you have the oven, you can pretty much select like whatever sample rate that you want. But right now I have it set to USB and it's going off the USB from my core audio, which would be 44.1 kilohertz. All right. The next thing I want to bring your attention to is the settings here. Now, this is your monitor output trim, your monitor uh, B output trim. So you have, I mean, you can kind of play with it and whatever sounds good to you. I really don't have any recommendations of what sounds good and what doesn't because everyone's ears are different. So that's why you're able to monitor, monitor it the way that you like to. So um, you have like your spit of and your spit of SRC and then you have your talk back. Uh, these, and then this one right here, these are basically outputs. So like, for example, TBK is your talk book. Your, I'm sorry, your talk back um, HP is headphone one, talk back headphone two. And then you have your um, talk back to monitor. So yeah, you can uh, select these or engage them. So if you want your talk back going to your headphones one, um, if you want your talk back going to headphones two, or if you want to go into the monitor output. The next thing you have here is your oscillator section here. So this is pretty cool. Um, if you want to, you know, test tones and stuff like that, just to make sure everything is working and to calibrate your system, you're able to have two different oscillators and you can select, uh, select like the frequency which is pretty dope. And then you can select like the level that you wanted at here. So you can have negative six, negative 12 or negative 18. Um, and then you have like, of course your mute switches on both your oscillators there. So you can have mute oscillator one, mute oscillator two. Uh, my particular device is equipped with the reamp volume. And I have that set at negative 20 um, and it's also off, but you can set it whatever you like. Then I also use like summing mixers as well. I have the Neve 5059 which is a pretty dope mixer. Shout out to Neve. Um, and then you can control like the, the volume for the line outs there. Um, so that's pretty dope. And then you have your brightness, which you can uh, select from here and you can have all the way up or, you know, just like right where it's at is good for me. And then down here is just your buffer size just for Windows stuff only. Um, I'm running my system on the Mac, so I don't really need to touch anything down there. Everything sounds good as is. All right. So that's pretty much your settings. Let's go ahead and move on to uh, the input here. So the next thing you probably want to know is um, your, and some of the inputs that you, they offer is the, of course, you have like your, your 12 mic pre's, then you have like your ADAT in, which would be controlled from right here if you use ADAT, but I don't even use ADAT. I don't know if I ever will. Um, you know, if, 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 if I need to, you know, go to an old, older, older student that has ADAT, and then I can use it. And then also I have spit of in that's controlled right there. So a little bit about the preamps. Um, one of the things that you should take note is these are your um, 48 volts here as it is labeled. Simply press the um, the switch here and then that's going to basically engage your phantom power. So you have your link switch here. That's going to be the second one or the one in the middle here. So these are all your link switches here. And you can control the volume there. And they're linked together. So if you have like a pair of keyboards you want to link together instead of, you know, adjust them individually from the left to the right, you can just, you know, turn them up together here, which is pretty good. Here with your, your phase switch here, 
Um, so like, so if you have like two different signals and they're out of phase, you can go ahead and check the polarity um, and just kind of click that switch there. And that's going to adjust that for you. Um, another thing here is like you have, um, so the, for me, the first four inputs are the, uh, the mic line or high Z. So the high Z only works for the first four inputs. After that, it doesn't, it doesn't give you the option to, um, so if you're plugging a guitar in and it's not into the first four preamps on the uh, Orion Studio, then, you know, I would have to, you know, find another way. I would have to come in through a line level, basically. Um, so that's pretty much that there. So you just select it there. Really simple to use. Um, so you can mix and match, have phantom power individually on all channels, or you can turn them on all. You can turn all of them on. Um, and let's see what else. And that's pretty much it for that there. So the next thing I want to go ahead and show you guys is the some of the routing here. But right before I get into the routing, I do want to mention that everything that I do today could be saved here. So one of the biggest, you know, um, pros about this piece of software or control panel is that you're able to pretty much save whatever you want um, individually. So you can save it all if you just click, you know, the whole switch. And you can label pretty much everything, or you can uh, decide just to save the preamp setup, or the mixer setup, or the routing. So you can you can kind of pick and choose what you want to what you want to save. And so every time I do a tutorial, it's easy for me because I just load my tutorial mic, and I'm able to shoot a tutorial, you know, very quickly. All right. So the next thing I want to go ahead and talk to you guys about is the mic preamps. So like I said, I have 12 mic preamps which correspond right here. And as you can see, as I've been talking here, my mic is coming in on channel one here, which I have labeled mic. So you can you can click here and then you can rename it. So if I just want it called one, I can you know call it one. Um, whatever, whatever have you. If I want to call it zero, I can call it zero over here. So so whatever you want to call it, you can go ahead and rename it, whatever you like. I like to keep it short and simple. So mic is fine. Um, and then, so these are my, like I said, I don't know if I mentioned, but these are the physical inputs for your mic pre's. And these over here are your, um, your, your emulation mics. So you have five through 12. And then you have your talk, uh, sorry, Thunderbolt play is for, 32 channels and then for USB, which is me, I only have up to 24. So obviously Thunderbolt is better technology and you get more bandwidth and more um, just space to record, more tracks to record on with the Thunderbolt play. So I have like a newer laptop. That's when I would use my Thunderbolt input and it works phenomenally. And that's what I pretty much recommend for the most part, but I am still doing stuff on my iMac here. So I definitely take advantage of the USB uh, the the 24 ins and outs which is you know 24 track rule if you ever heard graham from the recording revolution um you know go check out his channel shout out to graham like i said if you can't get it in 24 done in 24 tracks then you know i can't help you there but um so that's that's pretty good there um what else do i want to mention you have your eight at in so you have up to 16 here your spit of in two channels then you have your afx out one through 16 and then you have your mix, your software mixers one through four um, that correspond down here too. So I know what you're probably thinking by now. You're, you're probably saying, wait a minute. I thought you said these are all your inputs. Well, in a sense, they are inputs, but at the same time, some of these are outputs. For example, when you're routing, like my mic, for example, I have my mic routed from my, um, my preamp, but this is going right into my AFX. So basically you're routing from your AFX into my recording channel, which is over here. So let's go ahead and look at the signal flow. You have your mic, which is appearing on channel one, and it's being routed to AFX in right here, mic. And then you're going from the output of your AFX 14, which is going to the input right here. So to keep it organized, what I usually like to do so say, for example, I would call this mic as well, because mic is, is, is appearing right here. So another thing I like to do for good practices is called mic. So you know where it's going. So you have mic, which is here. And it's going there. And then you have your mic here, which is appearing on USB record one and two. And then I'm using this here just to basically monitor what I'm doing. So, I mean, I could have, you know, my mic 
going right into um you know my my line out here and the line out is going to be going towards my summing mixer so but for now i have it routed to the effects and let me show you guys what i'm doing with the effects here so when that's being routed it's going to be routed is like i said it's being routed through um uh channel 14 here so i have nothing on 13 nothing on 15 it's just being routed to 14. And so some of the plugins that I have here that come with the the, um, the control panel or the interface is all located right here in this section here. So now if I was to bypass this, it would sound okay, but it's going to basically kill, it's going to destroy my voice. So so this is what it sounds like bypassed. And I, as you can see, I have to talk a little bit louder, a little bit stronger and like really, you know, um, basically get close to the mic so you can under, understand what I'm saying. But after processing it with the internal effects like this, it sounds a lot better. And that's the secret into like really, you know, making good tutorial, you know, YouTube videos is basically having that that processing on board before I even hit Pro Tools or anything else. So, I mean, if I turn it off again, it's going to sound, you know, weak. I would have to talk a little bit louder and like really, you know, get some of that signal so you can really understand what I'm saying. And don't get me wrong, like, you know, having a condenser mic and this is going right to the interface already. It sounds, you know, it sounds decent, but I feel like it always can be, you know, beefed up a little bit more. Um, so that's how I pretty much do a lot of my tutorials. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through some of the settings that I have here while I'm in the effects tab. And then we'll come back to some of the other routing later. All right. So with the effects I have here is um the first thing is going to be the equalizer here so these right here that you can um basically put them anywhere you want you can put this at the bottom you can put it you know in the middle you can rearrange however you like uh, order does matter typically i have my equalizer first i like to take out the frequencies that i don't want and then boost what i do like if that makes sense so basically in mixing it's like subtractive mixing or eqing whatever you're basically you're you're cutting what you don't want and boosting what you want and get rid of the the dirt first so you could have that clean signal that sounds a little bit more natural and really um you know make your voice sound good you know a little bit you know, basically, you can you have your voice sound a little bit better, and you know when when you have when you record audio. So again, this can all um, you know be recorded right into Pro Tools like this because right now I'm using everything is internally, so I can get my my basically my vocals and all that stuff sounding really good before it even hits Pro Tools, which is pretty awesome if you ask me. So let's go ahead and show you guys how I got to the voice that I got to. Let's go ahead and see how I got there. So the first thing I went ahead and did was clean up the track, obviously by adding a EQ. So with the EQ added, it sounds like that. Right now, if it's silent, I know you guys can hear a lot of that room noise. So the next thing I went ahead and did was add something called a power gate. And that looks like something like this here. So when that's engaged, it pretty much takes out a lot of that fan noise that's coming from my computer, the air conditioner that you can't hear. You can only hear when I'm talking and that's exactly what a gate does. Um, I'm not going to really explain the features because I don't really want to get too much, you know, um, spend hours and hours on this video. I just want to spend, you know, some time like really explaining like some of the things that I, I'm doing to, to make it sound good. But this is what a gate pretty much does is just to, you know, like any other gate. I think of it as like a sliding door when you go into like a, a grocery store. The gate opens when it senses you and then it closes once you leave. And that's pretty much how this gate, you know, works here. So that that's what it does. It's like my voice. When it hears my voice, it opens up. When it when it when it's when it's closed, it just disappears. And that's what the gate does. The next thing I'm doing is using a um, a preamplifier, which is the BA31, um, which gives me a little bit more grit. And I just kind of like the way it sounds. It just makes it sound a little bit a little bit dirty. And then last but not least, one of my favorite compressors from Antelope Audio is the Stay Levin. And that just really brings everything out. It makes everything sound really, really good. So I love this compressor. Um, shout out to Antelope for that. All right. So the next thing I want to go ahead and get into is more of the routing. All right. So like I said before, you have your physical inputs, your emulations, your um, Thunderbolt, uh, USB, all that stuff, and your software, all that stuff. And then you have your output, which is located down here. So these are your line outs 
So out from my Orion studio, I have, you know, line out and it goes all the way to, what is this, 16, I believe. Yes, one through 16. Um, and then you have your headphones, one and two. So uh, on the front of my interface, I can have it, you know, two different, you know, two different things going on or be hearing the two, like listen to two different mixes or monitoring two different mixes, which is pretty cool. Then I have like my main monitor, which is one and two there. And then I have the reamp control, um, uh, left and right channel or channel one, channel two, whatever you want to call it. But basically I have two reamps that's located on my interface here. Uh, TB stands for Thunderbolt Record. We don't have to worry about that right now. But if I was on my Mac or my MacBook Pro, you know, it uses Thunderbolt. So, you know, this would be like my main focus right here is my um thunderbolt record so right here is the usb um this uh is obviously usb record and then right here you'll see little asterisks and that just basically symbolizes that hey you're plugged in usb so usb is what you're using and so that's where you can see where my mic is pretty much being recorded from is right here so you have my mic is coming out of here going right into the effects which it says mic here which is going from the effects being recorded right from the effects and that's why the signal sounds so clean right now. All right. So then you have your ADA. I don't really worry about that. You spit up AFX in, which is right here. Um, and then you have um, your software control mixers one through four, of course, which I'm using to monitor. And then if you ever get confused, that's why they kind of put a meters here. So if you ever wonder where your audio is going or if something's ever going in or out, you can always use it here. So Say, for example, you may be on a Thunderbolt record and, and you're wondering, like, hey, I'm not seeing anything. You want to make sure you're on USB record because that's where, you know, you're, you're, that's, that's where it's at. So this right here and all the colors kind of correspond to what you're, um, you're looking at here. So this is channel one and two for recording. Um, I have them panned. So that's why it's going to sound so clean here. Um, let's see. You can monitor basically anything. So like, say, for example, I'm monitoring um, my mic is coming in here. So I'm listening to everything that's going on here. I can hear everything that's going on here. So as I mentioned before, you got your software mixers down here and then you have, um, you know, you have all these different channels available for your software mixer, which are going to pop up right here. And then I'm listening to that, you know, it's going into my headphones, which corresponds with the horns. So I mean, you can get pretty flexible here with the things you can do. It's like almost endless. Um, you can use, you know, one and two, three and four. You can have like a lot of different software mixers or set up different headphone mixes, you know, and route that through maybe like Pro Tools or something else. Or you can even get creative and route it through the, the device itself. So, um, so like I said, you have your routings, you have your mixers, effects, and then you have your meters. And then you can just kind of see like where everything is going to. So if I want to check um, the USB play, um, you can see that nothing is playing. So I have nothing, you know, playing USB right now. Um, your line out, you can see all the line outs. So you can pretty much meter everything here. All right. So, so I've explained that. I've talked about, you know, the, the basic interface. I've talked about the effects, the meters, mixing, routing. So the more you start using it, the easier it becomes. So I hope you guys found this tutorial, you know, um, and my explanation helpful. If you have any questions or need me to clarify anything, you can always drop your comment down below. Um, if you guys need some help with some, if you want me to do more tutorials on the Orion Studio and just hear, you know, what I have to say, my thoughts about it, just drop a comment. You can always find me on my Instagram, Mr. Dope Status. I'm always trying to reply. Um, but the best way to contact me is obviously down there, leave a comment. And um, I'll try to get back to you, you know, as soon as I can. So I just want to thank you guys for watching. And like I said, I really hope this helped you guys. And uh, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.